So, ladies and gentlemen, we will continue with the FMEA analysis which you have been doing. So, FMEA worksheet has the following layout. You will identify the function or the process in a given system, then identify the failure mode, look for the effects of that failure on the overall performance of the system. Then for that look for the severity and occurrence of those failure modes and also list the potential causes of that failure. Also look at what will be the occurrence, what is the ranking of controls you have, can you detect that failure mode in advance, then also try to give what we call as an risk priority number. Then based on this occurrence and controls and detections try to recommend some actions and mark or remark the actions taken on these issues. Once it takes relevant actions, severity or occurrence or detection may now change. Now, for the change severity, occurrence and detection, find out the new RPN number which is nothing but the product of these three. Compare the new RPN number with the old RPN numbers for every function or the process being identified. Here I have a sample which is filled up for you on the exercise which I just discussed. For example, one of the function what I am selecting here is inflate airbag. The failure mode will be the airbag does not open at all. What will be the effect of this if the airbag does not open on impact? It will injure the passenger. So, the severity will be 8 on a 10 point scale, but the occurrence is very rare because generally inflated airbag is not present in a tested automobile vehicle. Therefore, occurrence is not very frequent because accidents are not occurring very frequently, but what is the potential cause of failure? The sensor which has got to trigger the opening of the bag is not working properly. That is why the bag is not inflated when it is required. So, what would be the occurrence of that particular number? Let us say 2 on a 10 point scale. What control can you give for that? Provide an LED indicator to notify that the sensors are not working. You can have an LED indicator on the dashboard. The driver or the passenger will understand that the airbag functioning is not effective, it is not working properly. So, the detection can be a 6 of 10 point scale because once you provide an LED, the driver can easily understand well in advance before he starts the car that his airbag system is not effectively in position. So, detection can be 6 out of 10. So, severity into occurrence can be a value of S into O. You try to find the detection which will be this into detection which is the RPN number of 96. Similarly, the other function is to restrain the passenger from accident the failure mode is occupant unable to withstand the inflation force because the airbag gives an inflation force on the passenger, the passenger is not able to withstand that force, maybe he is a weak passenger. So, the effect could be injury to the lightweight passenger is possible. If the passenger is not having enough strength, he may get injured because of the inflated airbag during accident. So, the severity is again 8 on a 10 point scale, but that kind of occurrence is very rare. What will the potential cause of failure is the passenger is not wearing a seat belt because he is bodily thrown towards the dashboard. That is the potential cause of such kind of failures. The occurrence of that can be a 4 in 10 point scale because generally people may not wear a seat belt, but for wearing a seat belt you may not provide an LED alarm, but you can always give a siren or a system which is present, but here I am not taking any advantage of that control mechanism provided, but the detection can be physically 10 out of 10 scale because you really know whether you are wearing a seat belt or not physically. So, the RPN number for this can be a very high order of 320. Similarly, if the rear seat passenger is having an injury that can be an effect of the restraining the passenger, then the severity can be 3 because his injury may not be as serious as the driver the force regulator may not be possibly working. So, he has a priority number of 18. So, what would you do if you want to really avoid this kind of accident? So, for example, let us say this kind of malfunctioning of the components. Install a switch to do activate the airbag system if the seat belt is not worn. 
For example, the passenger does not wear a seat belt, install a switch to deactivate the airbag, the airbag will not work otherwise, seat belt is not worn. Otherwise, you educate the consumers, the use of airbag potential failures etcetera. I am not filling up the action column here, this is for your exercise. You recommend certain actions, after the actions are implemented in the design, see what is the level of reduction in severity, what is the level of improvement in the detection, then now what becomes your RPM. So, this is a very simple format of doing an FME analysis for an airbag system, which is one of the mechanical system for which an FMEA can be readily applied. I have another example for you, which I call as a mechanical wave energy converter. Ladies and gentlemen, try to recollect an important note, which is said previously. In the system definition, if you do not understand the system completely, its components, its functions, you will not be able to actually do an FMEA. So, I deliberately picked up an example here, which is completely a newly developed and proposed system in our workplace. So, you may not be aware of this system. So, let us see are we successful in educating you to write an FMEA for this new system, which you have never seen its working earlier, which is a mechanical wave energy converter. It is a device, which is housed on a platform with this four box sections, which is suspending a float that is a floating buoy. It has got a platform. The platform has a gear mechanism, which I call as an unidirectional chain assembly. So, there is a pinion gear rack here attached to this float. As the float moves up and down, the gear rack moves up and down. This gear rack activates the chain mechanism, rotates the shaft. There is an RPM multiplier here, which gives a mechanical output to this shaft and the electrical output is taken from this shaft. In simple terms, it is a mechanical device, which has got a floating buoy. Because of the wave action, the buoy moves up and down. This up and down motion of the buoy activates a rotary mechanism here. This rotary mechanism is converted to electrical energy. So, the system is defined. I have a conceptual figure of the system again. I have a floating buoy. It is attached to a rack. The rack has got a pinion arrangement. There are pinion gears 6 and 5 with the yellow ones, which are present here. The blue ones are what we call as driving sprockets. As the buoy moves up or down, I must get an output on the shaft here. Let us see how does it work quickly. If the buoy is moving down, I have made an arrangement such a way that this will rotate clock when this rotates clockwise, this will activate the mechanism of the chain here and the shaft is receiving an well, let us say a rotation in a specific direction. As the floating buoy moves up, this will be released because you know imagine a cycle chain, you are pedaling a cycle, when you put a forward movement to the chain, the cycle moves forward, but when you make a reverse pedaling the cycle does not move reverse, because the free wheel basically does not give any action to the driving mechanism at all. Similarly, when the buoy moves up, this rotates anti clockwise. So, this is released from the socket. Now, this rotates a specific direction that will activate the rear gear mechanism, which will again make the shaft to rotate. On the other hand, for both up and down movement of the floating buoy, you always have an unidirectional motion of the shaft and I connect an electric generator to the shaft, I generate power from the ocean wave energy. So, the ocean waves hits the buoy, the buoy moves up and down, the up and down causes rotary motion in this mechanism. Ultimately, the shaft is made to rotate a specific RPM. I also enhance this RPM by what I call as an RPM multiplier. Then the enhanced RPM on the shaft is connected to an electric generator, I can get an output in electric power. So, the mechanical energy is converted to electrical energy by the system. So, during the downward movement of the buoy, the power which is the wave energy absorbed by the buoy is transmitted to pinion gear 6. The pinion gear 6, the pinion gears are what you see 
in yellow color here, pinion gear 6 is marked somewhere here you can see here. Whereas, a pinion gear 5 remains idle that is a mechanical design. So, this power transferred to pinion gear 6 is further transmitted to electric generator by this rotary mechanism which will make the generator shaft rotate in a clockwise direction through the chain mechanism number 10 this is activated. So, the heave motion that is up and down motion of the boy is converted to an electric power in the generator shaft that is the working principle of this mechanical wave energy converter. Now, the system is defined let us identify now slowly the components which components will you take into account I can list the components I will give you a past time a few seconds can you write down the list of components which you now consider for an FMV analysis of this mechanical wave energy converter yes very good first component can be a floating boy the second component can be the pinion gears very good third one good shafts are also possible to be identified yes generally when you have a mechanical arrangement you are right you may also have anti friction bearings which we call as a ball bearing you are definitely having chain mechanism in the system good you also have a sprockets of larger diameter that we call as a driver mechanism of the system very good you also have a smaller diameter which is a driven mechanism which I call as sprockets of driven mechanism and of course, you have a electrical generator very good you have been able to identify the components of a mechanical wave energy converter. I appreciate that you are able to understand the system working thoroughly and based on the working you are at least able to identify the functional components of the generator or the converter. Remember FMEA is only on the functional part of the component it is not on the physical part of the components at all. What are the possible failure modes? The boy can fail delivering displacement and the force lesser than the designed value. The boy may not give you a designed force therefore, there is no design output in the generator that is one possibility is a failure mode. The second failure mode can be the pinions the gears basically can fail and they do not transfer torque to the driving sprocket at all. The third failure mode could be the anti friction ball bearings can fail and affect the efficiency of the converter. The fourth failure mode could be the chain drives can fail they do not transfer power at all to the generator shaft. The next failure mode could be the free wheel sprockets can fail they do not transfer power at all to the generator shaft. And the last failure mode could be the electrical generator itself it does not work and therefore, no power is produced. Now, can I simply table it what I discussed in the previous slide what are the components what are all the failure modes what are its effects and what is the comment I will just explain only one for your understanding. Let us say talk about boy the boy has a delivering displacement and force lesser than the designed value what is the effect of that either less voltage will be produced or no power will be there. What could be the comment check the design fault in the boy or availability of wave energy. For example, the boy should move up and down and that is possible only when you have a specific amount of wave energy present in the C state. If the wave height is not sufficient, if the wave period is not adequate the boy movement may be very less in that case the boy may not produce the desired displacement. So, that is the effect therefore, no power is generated. Similarly, one can discuss for the pinion gears, anti friction bearings, sprockets etcetera, chains, chain mechanisms, free wheel sprockets, electric generator. For example, if you consider a component of electric generator what could be the failure mode of electric generator? The generator can have a defective armature wiring because it is not generating power at all. What would be the effect of that? It affects the efficiency and in major fault no power generation is going to occur. What could be the comment on that? Power generation completely ceases because generator is not working at all. Can I write an FMEA table in total for the whole process? For example, the part 
or the process what we are understanding is mechanical wave energy converter. The design responsibility of this converter lies with an XXX company. The model date is being given in this format in this sheet let us say. The other areas involved in the specific work is power generation using wave energy. The engineering change level is there in the design it says it is not applicable because it is a product development there is no engineering advancement so far happening it is only in the invention stage. So, let us list the components what we discussed before the boy, pinion gears, anti friction bearings, sprockets, chain mechanism, free wheel sprocket, electric generator. Let us identify what function do these components should do. The boy actually gives displacement in E motion, the pinion gear actually converts linear motion to rotary motion, these are all functions of these components. What will be the possible failure mode of this component? The boy may not give a desired displacement and the force. What would be the effect of that? The power could be very low voltage or basically there could be no power at all generated. So, let us say the severity could be 4 on a 10 point scale. The occurrence of this also can be a 4 on a 10 point scale and can I have any control measures to check this? Check the boy design and wave energy properly. So, it is possibly detectable therefore, I can say it is 7 on a 10 point scale I get a risk priority number related to boy component as 112. What action do we recommend? Rigorous testing in the lab is required before we basically design a product for its production. Similarly, for every component I can always ascertain the severity in occurrence and see whether it is detectable and try to find the risk priority number and try to rank them. Fortunately, in this table the risk priority number is maximum for my boy itself. So, ladies and gentlemen what do you understand by a component having the maximum risk priority number? We discussed in the previous slide turn back and see we must now do a component level analysis in detail for this boy alone is that right. Now, with this discussion we completed the first module almost in total. So, it becomes my essential job to carry through you some tutorial sheets for your self examination. There will be also some quiz papers given at the end of the presentation of all the modules. There will be an examination paper also being given for you. We of course, give you the solution sheets for all these tutorial sheets. Remember I have already given you a tute sheet in the previous presentation. Now, let us discuss about few more tute sheets now. Let us say tute sheet number 2. I have an humble request to all the listeners of this presentation. Take these tute sheets seriously. Do not look into the answers of the sheets before you try to answer them independently. All these questions have been prepared based on the presentations made in the previous modules. Understand the questions carefully, try to listen to the presentation once again, answer the tute sheets independently without referring back to the presentation. Consider this as a self examination for you. If you are able to successfully answer all the tute sheets correctly or even partly correctly, I will be happy and I understand that my effort of giving these lectures to you through this electronic media is completely successful. Let us look at the questions now on tute sheet number 2. What do you understand by FMEA? Readily I can see some of them are answering them on the answer books I am happy. List different methods of hazard identification. We have discussed different methods in previous modules, previous lectures on the same module please try to recollect them. Name one method of hazard evaluation which can be employed for mechanical and electrical systems. Interesting, try to look at which method of hazard evaluation is suitable for mechanical systems. I think we discussed examples on mechanical systems and electrical systems as well. What do you understand by FMEA and FMEA identifies something 
which I have got to fill up with the blank, what does it identify? Can you list the steps involved in FMEA? Can you fill up these two blanks? FMEA examines this of the system and not this of the system. What are the primary and secondary functions you understand on hazard evaluation and assessment? In an hazard evaluation, what do you understand by a weak link? In what kind of hazard studies this is required to be identified? Can you draw a typical format of an FMEA report? Is it possible for you? Can you at least name two types of FMEA to be carried out? Can you describe what do you understand by a failure mode, failure effect and failure cause? Do you know what is risk priority number? How is it significant in hazard evaluation studies? All these questions pertain to tute sheet number 2. I give you a pass. I hope and I believe strongly that you will try to answer these tute sheets independently without referring back to the lecture notes. Let us see now tweet sheet number 3. What do you understand by the cause and effect diagram? Can you explain this with an example? Can you list the importance of safety which you have been discussing through and through in this first module lectures? Explain the importance of safety in HSC management. What do you understand by HSC? Health, safety and environmental management through a schematic illustration. Can you define the following? Accident, safety or loss prevention, hazard, incident, risk. What is the difference between safety and risk? So, these questions comprise tute sheet number 3. I want you to answer them. I am seeing couple of students are immediately trying to answer these questions. I am happy you are able to follow the lecture intensively. Let us look at tweet sheet number 4. Can you list different types of risk as identified in risk analysis studies? Next question, what do you understand by individual risk? Next question, explain societal risk. How is this significant in risk assessment? Next question, how to measure accidents? Next question, what are all the steps taken to defeat an accident process? Last question, in tute sheet number 4, can you list few application issues in risk assessment? Tweet sheet number 5, I know you will be asking me repeatedly, sir how many tweet sheets are left over, we are closely coming to an end. Tweet sheet number 5, can you list different problems associated with offshore drilling operations? You can recollect ladies and gentlemen, we discussed something in detail about offshore drilling in one of the lectures in module 1. We discussed about different types of drilling rigs the safety is associated with them, different kinds of rigs and their operation etcetera in detail. Can you comment on the recent development of alternate drilling technique to improve safety in drilling operation? Do you recollect them? I am sure I have discussed this in my previous lectures. Now, in safety point of view, can you at least list important factors considered in offshore drilling? Can you now define what you understand by risk? Do you know what do you understand by loss? Let us look at tutorial sheet number 6, the last tutorial sheet of module 1. What is the primary difference between hazard and risk? List frequently asked questions in hazard identification. For a given problem, if you want to identify the hazards, what frequent questions you will ask yourself to identify those hazards present in a system. Next question, in offshore industry, what do you understand by gold plated system? I am seeing smiling faces, people are able to identify immediately a gold plated system. I am happy you are recollecting and you are following my lecture very closely. Can you list different methods of hazard identification? 
Now, can you tell me what have we understood by a HAZOP? What is the main objective of HAZOP study? Okay. Can you at least list the data you require to carry out an HAZOP study? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are ending the first module classes on HSC. The classes comprised of 10 and odd lectures by which we are able to cover up in detail some of the parts of the syllabus which I have been scheduled in the beginning for you. For your interest, I am showing that slide once again where we have defined our scope for first module of lectures. The first module of lectures should be covering introduction to safety, health and environmental management, basic terms and the definitions in HSC, importance of safety in petroleum and offshore industry, safety assurance and assessment, safety in design and operation, organizing for safety, hazard classification and assessment, hazard evaluation, hazard control and of course, some case studies related to this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we will take you forward to the next module, which will be again comprising of 10 lectures, where we will discuss environmental issues and management, atmospheric pollution, flaring and figurative release models, water pollution, environmental monitoring, environmental impact and decommissioning and environmental management. Thank you. Mm -hmm.